So I'm Pastor Aaron. Uh, I've had the honor to working with Jay for over 10 years. Uh, it's been an honor and privilege I've got to do that. We've got to do ministry together and that we just get to go into this next phase of ministry that God has for us. And, um, you know, a lot of times two dudes sit around and we talk about how well it could be and how cool it would be. And just to let you know, it's like this was never part of the story. Uh, no, and it's just amazing that we get to do this with you and then we get to do this here and to see God move. Um, you know, we had the honor of going to that conference and just sitting in a room of probably 200 pastors, and it was just amazing to see how God is moving and using Simple Church, and how now God is also putting us into a place of being at the front and, and leading, and so what's exciting is that you get to go along that journey with us. You know, one of the things that came into the realization was, is we don't have any young people going into ministry anymore, and it's really sad. It's a sad state of the church. Um, you know, the median age probably in that room at that time was 55 to 60. So we have no young people coming up and stepping to go into ministry to continue the strength of the church. And the blessing that our church has is we have two people in our church that have decided to follow God's calling to go into ministry and become pastors. So saying that is they need your prayers. They need you to encourage them, pray for them, help them any way you can because the enemy is against the church and how he's doing that is going after our young people. So I ask for you guys to please pray for them. You know, we had Taylor who got up here and bravely and courageously told her story at 20 years of age. Who does that? I mean, I did at 20. Like, I barely had a job at 20. And she gets up here and proclaims the word and her strength and her ability to tell, that, tell her story and Alana and everything that she's gone through. And those are the people that have been commissioned by God to start leading our next generation. So as you have your time and in your prayers and in your studies and your time, please keep them in there and keep, help keep them strong. You know, in this series, it's kind of interesting, as I was kind of thinking about it, our planning of the series was really kind of to be a soft series, just like, what's your favorite story? What do you like to talk about? What's your scripture verse? And it was just amazing to watch God move this summer. And I was thinking we should have changed the name to God Vibes, because it was really about how does God, like, come and make these changes in our lives and step in and then, you know, all of a sudden shift our thinking and our thought process. And the undertone that I heard through all this was there is some level of fear or anxiety that comes along with our walk. And our humanness, as we move, we get scared of just things, life, decisions, and just as we just breathe and get up in the morning, like, will my hand work? <laughs> I'm starting to get older, like, oh, my knee hurts. You know, it's like those things, but then you're like, oh, what is that pain? It, you know, when you're a 20, you're like, what's the pain? I don't know, walk it off, you know. At 49, you're like, what's the pain? i got to go to the doctor, hope it's not something bad, you know. And it's just your mind starts playing into that. <laughs> Thanks. God, <laughs> thanks for the encouragement. <laughs> i got about 20 more minutes to go. <laughs> but, you know, and so as you start to think about, think about fears. Think about things we're scared of. Some people are afraid of clowns. Come on, clowns get bad rap. I mean, what's a clown ever done? So who's scared of spiders? Okay, I have a scared, scared of spiders. Like, it's this big. It's on the ground. It's like, it's never done anything. And you're, right, we're scared of dogs, big dogs, little dogs. Right? We're, we're, but there's some type of fear, right? There's a fear that we have of something that we don't like. And some of us, we're afraid of the dark. Isn't it interesting how 30 seconds of darkness led your mind to go to places all of a sudden to what if? What's going to happen? Wait, is there going to be a killer clown jump out? <laughs> we did that once in youth, remember that? <laughs> we scared those kids to death, too. <laughs> Our minds will go to a place and create something that doesn't exist. Fear is actually only knowledge. And fear is the knowledge you have. Like, we don't, you don't, you're not born with a fear of spiders. Like, when you come out of the womb, that doesn't happen. There's only two fears that you're actually born with. 
One of them is fear of loud noises, and the second one is fear of falling. Every other fear is actually a learned fear. So any fear that you have, it's something that you've learned in life. Your fear is also based on your life experiences. It's based on the things that have happened to you as you go through life. And so when I'm scared of um, a dog, it's because, oh, maybe I was bit by a dog. And so now I'm scared of all dogs. But that's the knowledge that you have. For me, it's fear of heights. So when I get onto a ladder, probably past about eight foot, my hands start to get sweaty. I start getting like my breathing starts changing. And I'm like, ah. But the interesting thing is it's actually you're not afraid of being high. I'm afraid of my knowledge of gravity. <laughs> and what that is is if I fall off, gravity's going to engage, and I'm going to slam into the ground, and it's going to hurt. So my fear that when our pastor makes you climb on the ladder to do things really high is based upon my knowledge of gravity. The problem is our fear can also come into a spot that it cripples us. It stops us. It stops us from accomplishing the goals that God has for us to do because we allow for things to come into our mind to start creating false knowledge and not giving us the wisdom we need. So the interesting thing is that when we now go to Scripture and then when we read into the Bible and the Bible tells us, hey, you need to fear God, well, then what happens is where is our wisdom and knowledge about who God is? Is our fear one of, gosh, if I don't do these things, man, where's my eternity? I better do this, this, and this. Unfortunately, the church has done things in the past where they have scared you into the feet of Jesus. They say things like, hey, if you were to die today, do you know that you're going to go, well, to heaven? Well, then the question is, are you moving because you want to know more about God and more about Jesus? Or are you moving because I don't want to know what the alternative is? Right? And so that is the importance of having knowledge and wisdom about who our God is. Our reality, our fear of God is not really more, more, is more than just knowledge and wisdom. Also, it's our experience with God. It's as we walk and the things that we do and how we experience how he moves in our lives. Because as we traverse life and we go on this walk with him, then what happens is we get to gain who he is and how he operates. The interesting thing is when I studied about this, the Hebrew word for in the sentence, fear God, there isn't an English word for that. And the closest English word that we have is actually fear. But if we were to translate that word, what that actually means is that you have an understanding who God is, and you have a wisdom of who he is, but you're more operate in a position of awe because you don't know how it works. So the best way I could come up with that for an explanation of kinding to put this into a mental picture for you, in Oklahoma we have a tornado. If you are two miles away from an F5 tornado and you see it on the landscape, it is the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. It's this piece of creation that in its power and awe as it moves across the landscape, that you're like, that is the most amazing thing. That is so neat. Your perspective has totally changed if you're sitting in the middle of that F5 tornado as it comes across your house and sucks your house up off. The difference is, is now you respect the tornado. You know the power that it has and its capability. And so what happens is now it shifts so when they come on and say, hey, there's a tornado warning, and it's coming, and there's something coming, you're like, I know exactly what that is. I know how that works. I don't even understand it. I don't know how a tornado is made, but I know I need to move, and now it's time to do something. And that is how God is. You know he works. You know he moves. You don't understand it all, but you know when you're in the presence of that, you're like, oh, this is God. You're sitting in a place of God. You're sitting in a place of where only his power does that. That provides buildings and places and peoples, and you get to be a part of that. You get to sit in the room and see his power work. This is how a rabbi put it. The fear that overcomes us when we suddenly find ourselves in possession of considerably more energy than we are used to, inhabiting a larger space 
than we are used to inhabiting. So what this rabbi was saying is like when you step in and it is something much more greater than you can comprehend, that your mind literally just explodes and you understand that you are now inhabiting that same spot, that you are in that same space. So why are we so scared? Why does fear cripple us? If we have an understanding and a knowledge of who God is and how he works, and we have a wisdom, then why do we get to a point where then we don't believe? Do you think it's scary to start a church? Do you think it's scary to start a church during a pandemic? <laughs> do you think it's scary to start a church with a pandemic and get a building and you have no people? <laughs> you know, in that moment, there were times that there was fear. Are we doing the right things? Are we listening from God? Is this what we're supposed to be doing? Who knows? And in that space and time, the enemy likes to come in. He likes to slide in. He likes to say things. He likes to say, you're not qualified. You're not good enough. You're not big enough. You don't have enough money in the bank account. You're not pretty enough. You don't have the talents. You don't have the gifts. And the enemy comes in, and he drops those little pieces of fear into your mind. And what I truly believe is we don't 100% believe in the awe-inspiring power of our Father. And then we listen to the world around us that creates fear. Here's the last 20 years. In 2000, we had Y2K. 2001, we had anthrax. 2002, West Nile. 2003, SARS. 2005, the bird flu. 2006 was E. coli. 2008 was the financial collapse. 2009 was swine flu. 2012 was the Mayan calendar. In 2013, we worried about North Korea and World War III. 2014, Ebola. 2015, ISIS. 2016, the Zika virus. 2020, the coronavirus. That's just the last 20 years, and that has nothing to do with even if you have a job. Or you're raising kids or family, starting a church. And we wonder why we offer, why all of a sudden something happens and our minds go to fear. Because this is what you've been bombarded with for the last 20 years. And what this does is this erodes away your ability to acknowledge that God has power. That is much greater than any of these things. So no wonder we are sitting in a place where we have anxiety and fear and not trusting what's happening in God's process. And so how do we combat that? What do we do? How do we come against this? Again, it's our knowledge that we have that beats back fear. It's the true knowledge we have. So when we're confronted, we know what the answer is. And we get that from here. This is the living, breathing word of God. Has been around longer than anything else on the planet. When you read it as you walk, it changes every time. That's why we say don't stop reading your Bible because you can read the same verse over and over and it means something different every day. This is my favorite verse in the Bible. And when I was reading this and Jay was like, hey, this is what I want, you know, we should talk about the summer. And I read it again and I'm like, and I've used this verse for everything. And I thought, this is about fear. How do we beat it by, back? And I thought, you know what? Paul did it in two sentences to combat it. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13 and 14. Be on guard. Stand firm in your faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Do everything in love. That's it. It's not some crazy thing that you have to do. It's not super hard two sentences in the Bible to combat our fear. So what does that look like? How do we do that? It's easy to say it. You're standing on the stage. Be on guard. Let your healthy fear protect you. Here's your healthy fear. Don't stick your finger in the light socket because you're going to get electrocuted and it's going to hurt. That's your healthy fear. God gave you the ability and to cognitively understand. Your wisdom and your knowledge is, yes, if I do that, electricity is going to zap me and it's going to hurt really bad. It is what we call fight or flight. That's why God has also wired you to do that. There is a certain amount of healthy fear. Your healthy fear is what's going to protect you and keep you from making bad decisions and doing those things. When you're like, I probably shouldn't go out tonight. That's probably not the best thing to do. So use your healthy fear, the wisdom that you've gained over your years breathing on this earth, the knowledge that you have gained from reading this Bible, that is your healthy fear. When you are no right from wrong and what you should do. Stand firm in your faith. 
How do I buy back, fight back fear doing that? Spend time with your family right here in church. This is your family. Read your Bible every single day. Volunteer. Help. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. Do more than just showing up on a Sunday morning. Start a Bible study. Here's what happens. When you come into a place like this and you spend time, you will hear stories and you will get to see the power of God. You will see him move. You will be in awe to go, oh, man, he moved. In, okay. The difference is, is because you're in the pulse of what's happening. You get to hear the story behind the talk that happens in the lobby. And when that, you only can see that when you're here. And what that does is that gives you a solid foundation to know, no, God is still working. He's still operating. He's still moving. Be courageous. Don't, sorry, my Enneagram 8's coming out. Don't allow perceived outcomes to affect what you're going to do. Don't allow, when you're sitting there and you're trying to figure out, be like, well, what if it didn't, what if it doesn't go well? What if they don't like me? What if I get on the stage and none of my words make sense? That's how the enemy comes into your head and gets you to pause for a minute, to stop or to move you and derail you from what God's plan is for you. Be bold. Step out. Move. God says go, go. You are sitting in a place because somebody, because God went and talked to one person and said, hey, I need you to go start to do this. And he's like, well, and he's like, now. He's like, okay. And we made that. He said, yes, sir. And he was courageous and didn't have all the answers and was told by other pastors, this is a bad idea, don't do this. Men of God, and like, nope, you know what? My God says to move, and so we're going to move. So be courageous, move, and then be strong in your decision. Once you go, you have, the under, have a true understanding, have the wisdom and knowledge you need. Be strong, be proud. If you're strong in your faith, could I go to every one of your social media and know that you're a Christ follower? When you walk out, when you present yourself to the public, does everybody go, oh, they're a Jesus follower. Yeah, you can just tell. Why? Because you're confident. You know you have the power. I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of what you think. Or I'm here because I love you. And this is what Paul did at the end. Oh, sorry. Let's go forward. Get so excited sometimes. I don't get to use my words very much. It doesn't let me up here, so then like it all runs together. So our strength and where we look for, how are we strong? What do we do? The power that God sent us is what gives us our strength. I was trying to think of whenever I was doing this is how could I present this to you in a way? And so as I was sitting there thinking, I was like, I know exactly how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to have my friend Jody. We've been friends uh, probably about six years or so. Yes, maybe. Somewhere in there. And Jody's a really good friend of mine. And, you know, Jody's pretty much my size and stuff. You know, we kind of, people mistake us for brothers and stuff. I mean, you know, it's like, it's all right. But I was thinking about, you know, how, how do I represent the strength that we have? And I think we forget. I think we forget that God sent us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is six foot two, wrapped in tattoos. You know why? Because when you have a Jody... You walk different in the crowd. Right? You're like, yo, what's up? What's going on? Yeah, no, you looking at me? No, I got a Jody. I got a guy. Right? You act different. If you're standing somewhere and this guy's standing beside you, you're like, no, we need our table now. <laughs> we forget that God sent us a Jody. Now, here's the interesting thing. I've got to hear a lot of Jody's stories. 
And Jody, if I said something about your kids, you'd probably hit me really hard. If I said something about your wife, yeah, it probably like it would hurt real bad, right? Yeah. I'm very well aware of Jody's ability and his power. But yet when Jody walks into the room, I'm not scared of him. I don't fear him. I respect his power and his ability. And now what that does in turn is that makes me stand taller, stand stronger. Why? Because I have a Jody. And every single one of you have a Jody. Now, he all can't come to your house, but. (laughs) But this is an example of the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells inside you. This is why there needs to not be fear. You should walk taller. Your chest should be out. You're a child of God. And so when you stand anywhere, maybe you remember, hey, I've got a six foot two tattooed, like, mm, works out, dude, standing beside me. Doesn't matter what you bring against me. Doesn't matter what you say or what you do. You know the answer to the end. You have nothing to be scared of. Thank you, Jody. Appreciate it. You know the outcome. You know where you're going. The men that wrote this Bible spent years in chains and in prison. And they were happy to do it. Because they knew in the end. They knew exactly where they were going. There was nothing for them to be fearful of. And we walk around and we have the Holy Spirit with us. This is how Paul puts us into check. Check says, or Paul says, hang on just a second. Be courageous. Be strong. Stand firm in the faith. Do all these great things and then do it with love. Because love beats back fear. Love also keeps you in check. Love does not allow your pride to get too big when God blesses your church and does crazy things. Love makes you say, no, only my God can do this. I have nothing to do with this. That's what love does. This is how I know. You're standing at the grocery store. The Holy Spirit comes inside and says, hey, I want you to buy the groceries for the person behind you. And you're like, yeah, I have $73.14 in my checking account. God? He said, no, because you love them, I want you to do that. And out of love, it, over, it overpowers the fear you have in your checking account. And you turn around and you're like, hey, could I? And here's how the power of God works. He either shows to you in a way like, no, no, if you just follow my commands, I will show you a power that you've never witnessed before. I will take care of you. Out of your love and the power that you did, and the awe is like, I'm going to connect you to somebody who just wants to know Jesus, and you're going to do that through buying them groceries. That's how I know that love can overpower fear. Everything we do is in love. God loved you so much that he sent his son, Jesus. And then Jesus loved you so much that he was willing to die. He asked. He was afraid. God, is there any other way, any way we could do this? Any way? I'm open to anything. And his father said, no, you know the plan. And Jesus said, I love them that much. And then God loved us so much that he raised Jesus from the dead. He grabbed death and then killed it for all of mankind. And then God didn't stop there. He loved us so much that then he sent us the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to come and dwell inside of each and every one of us. The same power that raised Jesus up from the deathbed to a resurrected life is the same power that now comes and rests with you. And when you stand here, there's the Holy Spirit is here. You have nothing to be afraid of. You are a child of God. We just sang a song about how he splits the sea and how he does all of these things for you. Sometimes I think 
we just forget. We forget the power that he has.